a beast that instills dread in the minds of those who dare to dream it exist, is hidden deep inside the shadowy and forgotten reaches of the prehistoric past. The huge and deadly creature, Dicenodonts, seemed as the personification of fear and alien fascination, a real nightmare that comes to life. These prehistoric animals which roamed the Earth over millions of years ago had a menacing allure that went beyond what we can currently comprehend. Dicenodonts were a group of ancient synapsids that lived between 299 and 201 million years ago, during the Permian and Triassic epochs. They belonged to the therapsid subgroup and were distant cousins of mammals. Dicenodonts came in a wide range of sizes, from tiny to enormous. The smallest species, like Diectodon, might reach lengths of around 3.3 feet and weigh a few kilograms. Larger Dicenodonts, like Lystrosaurus, on the other hand, could grow lengths of up to 6.6 feet and weigh several hundred kilograms. There were also enormous Dicenodonts, such as Kenemeria and Dinodontosaurus, which were heavier than several tons and longer than 9.8 feet. The distinctive body shape of Dicenodonts was marked by a sturdy, barrel-like structure. Their ribcage was deep and wide, giving their critical organs and muscle attachment points plenty of room to move around. Their limbs were spread out to the sides and their torsos were rather low to the ground, which helped them maintain their balance. Typically, the limbs of Dicenodonts were strong and pillar-like. Both sets of limbs were situated close to the sides of their bodies, with the forelimbs being shorter than the hind limbs. Given that their sprawling limb configuration resembles that of contemporary reptiles, Dicenodonts probably moved with a semi-erect stride. Dicenodonts had a tail that was relatively short in relation to the length of their bodies. They maintained equilibrium while moving and maneuvering thanks to the tail's function as a balancing organ. According to the species, Dicenodont skulls varied greatly in size and robustness, as well as in forms and decoration. The brain and other essential structures were shielded by the strong, thick skull bones. The prominence of large tusks was one of Dicenodont's most recognizable characteristics. The size and shape of these tusks, which protruded forward from the upper jaw, varied between species. Some Dicenodonts, like Canamearia, had long, curving tusks that looked like scimitar blades. But Lystrosaurus had shorter, more robust tusks. Similar to the dentine and enamel found in animal teeth, the tusks were made of these materials. Dicenodonts have a unique jaw structure behind their tusks. They had teeth that resembled incisors in the front of their jaws, but no teeth at all in the back. Instead, the upper and lower jaw merged to create a break-like bone structure covered with horn. To efficiently consume vegetation, Dicenodonts used this beak as a cropping or cutting tool. The secondary palate, a bone wall dividing the nasal and oral chambers, was present in Dicenodonts. They were able to chew and swallow food without being interrupted, thanks to this change that allowed them to breathe during eating. In the evolutionary shift toward more productive herbivory, the secondary plate was a key player. Dicenodonts had well-developed jaw muscles that were fastened to conspicuous bone ridges and crests on the skull. These muscular muscles enabled the strong biting and chewing forces required for processing plant material, which were paired with the sturdy skull structure. Dicenodonts with dental batteries included Lystrosaurus. A dental battery is a special configuration of teeth in which several teeth are crammed closely together in a single, lengthy structure. To help break down resistant plant material, the battery's teeth would wear and grind against one another. A significant portion of Dicenodonts possessed many bony plates or scutes embedded in their skin. Different species' plates differed in size, composition, and placement. They offered defense against predators and other environmental dangers in the form of exterior armor. Simple rows to more complex designs can be used to position the plates, improving the Dicenodonts' total defensive capacity. Dicenodont bones were often substantial and thick. They had well-developed ribs, leg bones, and other skeletal components that supported and shielded their internal organs structurally. Their overall toughness and adaptability were strengthened by these modifications. Dicenodonts had broad fenestrae, or nasal holes, in their skulls. These apertures were a morphological adaptation to make room for specialized tissues, including an expanded nasal cavity or structures involved in temperature regulation. Paleontologists are constantly researching and debating the precise function and use of these expanded nasal apertures. 
Like contemporary reptiles, it's likely that Dicenodons had a scaly skin covering. The scales would have offered some degree of defense and contributed to lowering skin water loss. The precise dimensions, configuration, and layout of these scales are still unknown. It is challenging to infer the skin texture of Dicenodonts only from fossil evidence. However, it is conceivable that they possessed rough or bumpy skin textures, comparable to some reptile skin which might have helped with thermoregulation or camouflage. Dicenodonts were alive during the Permian and Triassic periods, which covered a sizable amount of time and saw considerable climate changes. The Permian period, which spanned from 299 to 252 million years ago, was characterized by a variety of climate conditions on Earth. Early Permian climates were typically warm and muggy, with vast swamplands and forests that could produce coal. But as the Permian period progressed, the temperature changed to become drier and more hot, resulting in the development of large deserts and grassy ecosystems. These arid and semi-arid environments were probably home to Dicenodonts from this time period, notably the Diictodon genus. Following the Permian, the Triassic period lasted about from 252 to 201 million years ago. The early Triassic was characterized by a hot, arid environment with numerous deserts and barren landscapes. But as the Triassic period went on, the climate grew more humid, resulting in the growth of lush tropical forests and swampy regions. Following the Permian mass extinction catastrophe, known as the Great Dying, which took place at the end of the Permian period, Dicenodonts, including Lystrosaurus, flourished in particular. The fact that Dicenodonts survived and then multiplied during the early Triassic suggests that they were able to adapt to a variety of environmental circumstances. Throughout the Permian and Triassic eras, Dicenodonts lived in a range of environments, animals that lived largely on land and were called Dicenodonts. Swamps, marshes, and riverbanks were among the riparian and wetland habitats that some Dicenodonts called home. For Dicenodonts that consume vegetation, these locations offered a variety of plants and water supplies, making them acceptable habitats. Climate, plant patterns, water availability, and the prevailing geological conditions during the Permian and Triassic periods all had an impact on the Dicenodont habitats. Their ecological success throughout those periods was largely a result of their capacity to live in and adapt to many settings. Dicenodonts were herbivorous creatures, which means that their main source of food was plant material. Their dental structure and unique eating characteristics suggest a diet high in plants. Dicenodonts lived in a variety of settings, thus their food may have changed based on the kinds of plants and flora that grew there. In arid or semi-arid conditions, certain species may have evolved to eat tougher, fibrous vegetation, while others may have done the opposite in more lush environments. Dicenodonts are thought to have reproduced sexually, like the majority of reptiles and mammals. This implies that Dicenodonts of various sexes would mix in order to mate and have children. It is believed that Dicenodonts demonstrated viviparity, which means they gave birth to live young rather than laying eggs. The discovery of fossils with intact embryos inside the body cavities of female dicenodonts lends credence to this theory. As a result, it can be inferred that the embryos matured internally and were fed by the mother up until birth. Dicenodonts, like many other animals, were extinct as a result of a catastrophic extinction event. Dicenodonts were extinct near the end of the Triassic period, roughly 201 million years ago. Climate and sea level changes, as well as other significant environmental changes, occurred toward the conclusion of the Triassic period. The availability of suitable habitats and resources for Dicenodonts may have been impacted by climate shifts, such as increased aridity and temperature changes. These modifications might have had an effect on their access to food, water, and general survival. So this was all about the deadly creatures Dicenodonts. If you want to get more such updates, hit the bell icon and subscribe to this channel. Also, let us know in the comment section how you find it. By knowing about unique species, we get an idea of how the world, climate, and wilderness was in historic times. We get to know about several new concepts we never knew ever existed. Did you know about a creature that had a bird-like skull? It was called Dromaeosaurus. Click the video on your screen to know more about it.